Hello and welcome to Chrome Computing. Uh, this video I will be looking at the Pixel Slate, which is here. I've been using it for a couple of weeks. It's got quite a lot of fingerprints all over it, which does happen when you've got a touchscreen display. Um, also the Pixelbook Pen and the Bridge Keyboard. This isn't the standard keyboard that comes with the Pixel Slate, so it isn't the Google keyboard, it's the Bridge Keyboard. I decided to use this one because although the Google keyboard looks great, this is cheaper and I also prefer the design if you haven't got to mess about with the positioning of your actual display with this keyboard. All are available in the UK and the USA and there is links in the video below to one of my articles on my website which will show all the latest prices so click on there if you are interested. So this was originally released in 2018 and if you've been following Chromebooks and Chrome OS you'll know that it wasn't a very successful launch which is a real shame and that was more down to Chrome OS wasn't actually ready for tablet use, it wasn't the hardware because I can tell you now this is a very very good Chrome OS tablet. Um, move on two years and Chrome OS updates have made it the tablet that it should be. So this is still a great tablet to buy. Also, it still gets updates until June, I think June, July 2026. So you've still got six years of updates and you can get it at a much cheaper price than it was originally launched at because Google, unfortunately, are no longer looking to make Chrome OS tablets, which I think is a real shame. Maybe they'll change their mind in the future. As I says, it was all to do with Chrome OS not being ready, which a lot of people in the community knew in the Chromebook community it's a, it's a shame that Google didn't really think about that before releasing such a good product. Um, in relation to the product, um, it, it's, it's, it's great. It's got a really nice midnight blue. It's aluminium on the back. On the front, it's all glass and it's nicely curved on all of the sides. So there's no rough edges whatsoever. It is really nice. It's really minimal. The only thing you can see is on the back is a little G sign for Google on the back. I don't know if you can see that there. That's great. And there's a little webcam on the back here, which is eight megapixel. Look, get my words out, eight megapixel. And there's also a camera on the front, which is eight megapixel. So first of all, let's look at the tablet on its own. The tablet I went for was the M3 processor. That's the lowest spec one you can get. You can also get the Intel i5 and the Intel i7. The reason I've gone for this is because it's quite hard to get now, a lot of them, um, and I did, it, I did struggle to get this delivered. Um, and it was really cheap. I got this for a really good price, so I was quite impressed. Um, in relation to turning it on, the good thing is it's got the power on button there, but that also acts as a fingerprint scanner. So when you set up your Chrome OS first, you do a few prints of your finger and then that's all set. So all you have to do to turn it on is simply press that there and there you go. It loads up without you having to put in your password which is a really good thing. It's great when you're using it in tablet mode because you don't really want to be typing in a password on a virtual keyboard. So that is a really good thing to know. The first thing you'll realize is the display is fantastic and it really is. It's a 3000 by 2000 molecular display. I think I pronounced that right. It's some Google technology, but it, it, it is fantastic. It's really bright as well. Um, and it's got volume up and down here. In relation to anything else on the actual tablet when it comes to ports and connections, it's quite minimal, which is fine. It's got a USB Type-C here, and it's got a USB Type-C here as well, and they're the only two things you've got. Now that USB Type-C is the most modern type of USB connection, so that's good to see. Um, it does mean if you've got older peripherals, you wouldn't be able to use them on this but you can always get an adapter so that's no big deal. The USB type C is used for charging and it's also if you want to you could disconnect it to uh, external display like this for example and, and that's all fine to do. Now the, the, as I said the display is fantastic it's very bright if we bring up the display 
it's very bright. Might not, you might not be able to tell here, but this is in quite bright light and you can see that display, it, it is very, very bright. So there's no, no issues with that at all. Now using this in tablet mode is fantastic. When I first got it, I, if I'm being honest with you, I don't actually know what Chrome OS version it was on. I did the first update and after the first update, it was on Chrome OS 72. So it must have originally been on a previous one to that, either 70, 71, I don't really know. But it did take quite a few updates to get it up to the latest Chrome OS operating system version. And for Chrome OS tablets at the moment, that is, I believe, Chrome OS version 83. So it's up to its latest version it can be on, which is 83, and it's got there about updates until June 2026 so that's really good so going back to the processor as I said this is the M3 I thought that would that struggle it doesn't it's great it's got 8 gigabyte of RAM it's got 64 gigabytes of storage I said that with a puzzled face because I think that's correct um, 64 gigabyte of storage it has got 64 gigabyte of storage which is fine if you want 128 gigabyte of storage that would be the Intel i5 version if you want more storage 256 gigabyte of storage that's the Intel i7 version this one's got 64 64 gigabyte of storage is fine you'll be able to install quite a few Android apps with that but the processor is absolutely fine I've used this to um, surf the internet, it's fine as you would expect it to be. I've used it for Android games and it's absolutely fine playing Android games. I've used it to stream um, full HD movies in YouTube and it's fine. I've streamed two YouTube movies and it, it was fine. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with the performance here. Obviously if you want something that's you know, super powerful, then by all means go for the i5 or i7 version, but you'll be paying a lot more for it and you don't need it, you really don't. As soon as you've got up to the latest operating system, this, this works absolutely fine. I've not had any problems. Some people thought that maybe it will bottleneck with the eight gigabyte of RAM for the M3 processor. That's not the case at all. The M3 processor can actually support 16 gigabyte of RAM. So there's no bottlenecking issues from what I can see. I, I've not come across any issues with it whatsoever. The touchscreen display works perfectly fine. Um, it, it's really good. It's fantastic as a tablet. The only criticism I would say as a tablet is it does feel a tad heavy. Now, I think I'm being a slightly unfair there because you are getting a fantastic build quality and compared to most Android tablets, yes, okay, some are aluminium, but a lot of them are plastic as well and they're usually smaller in display size. This is a 12.3 inch display. Most tablets are around 10. So I'm comparing it to Android tablets and it does feel a tad heavier than an Android tablet. However, in relation to Chromebooks, it, it's it's much lighter and um, so it's quite good. I think it's 2.6 pounds, uh, about 0.73 kilograms in weight. That is obviously just a tablet. When you add the keyboard, it is, it is heavier, but it's still, it's still fine to carry around. It's not a crazy weight. That's the only um, real criticism I would say. The battery life is really good. Bear in mind, when I first charged this, I charged it completely up and then I charged the keyboard as well. And the way you charge the keyboard is that you use the USB type C on the keyboard and connect it to the USB type C on the display. And you can still use the keyboard, but you know, then it will uh, charge your keyboard as well. So bear in mind, I charged the, the keyboard and I was using this all night. Um, when I first got it, did the battery lasted for a long, long time. I was using it for about eight hours, doing loads of different things, and it still had about twenty nine percent battery. So it, it does work really well in relation to that. Um, yeah, so I, I'm really happy with it in tablet mode. The stylus is really good. I've used quite a few different Android apps of it. And yeah, it, it's quite addictive actually. It's quite nice to have a mess about. So I think that's worth it. It obviously depends on whether you want to spend the extra money on that or not. Um, the great thing, and this is why I'm thinking Chrome OS tablets are surely going to take off, is that you've got a tablet and it is just a tablet and it works absolutely fine. Almost as good as an Android tablet. And I say almost because I still don't think it's at Android standard yet. 
but it's not far off. It really isn't. It, you can definitely use it as a tablet without any problems whatsoever. You've got the virtual keyboard as well, which is fine. And you can even use the pen to use to search for things rather than your keyboard if you want to, which is really good. But it's adding the keyboard is what makes Chrome OS tablets such a good option. And it's very simple. You just push it in like that. And that's it, it's done. It's as simple as that. And it, it's really good. And it's the same to remove it. You just hold down the keyboard there, pull it off and it's done. And it's just great, I love it. It's absolutely fantastic. It's so versatile that you can use it for both things. It's great. Now in laptop mode, it's just the same as any other Chromebook. Once you've got it into this mode, it's exactly the same, which is which is really good to see. Um, charging the keyboard did take six hours, which sounds like a crazy amount of time. And you can tell it's charged charging because it's got a red light here on this key there, the key just there. It did take six hours. However, after looking at the instructions, I found out that then that charging, once it's charged, it lasts up to six months without being charged again. And that's working on the basis of that you weren't using it for two hours a day. So that's pretty good. Six months worth of charging for six hours of charging isn't bad at all. To connect it the first time, it's really simple. You connect it, you hold down the Bluetooth key there for three seconds, and then it instantly connects to the tablet. The keyboard works really well. It's got great feedback when you're using it. So I've got no problems with this. I've typed an article on it and it's absolutely fine. It's backlit. It's got three different backlit um, brightness on there as well. So you can choose one what suits you, so it suits the surroundings. It's really great. Trackpad is really nice to feel and it's also really nice to use. I've got no complaints with this keyboard. And it's exactly the same as the actual tablet, so it's midnight blue. Bridge have done a really good job, so it, 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 it's perfectly made for the Pixel Slate. It, it's really nice. When you close it down like that, it does close, turn off, just as you would with a normal Chromebook tablet. Open it up again is, you could argue it's a tab fiddly, it's okay, you just have to get your fingers in there. And there it is, it's on again. Now, when you do close it and open it back up, the keyboard does turn off to say power. So all you do is simply click that and it's back on again. And to log in, you could type in your password or you could simply just click, put your finger on there and it logs you in again. Yeah, so it's really good. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. It, it, it. This is surely the way forward. Not for everyone. I know there's people who are still going to prefer a Chromebook over a Chrome OS tablet. But, but, but for people who actually does want an actual tablet and not something in hybrid two-in-one mode where you've got a keyboard behind, which I personally feel feels a bit odd in tablet mode, it's perfect. It really is. And it, it's this is like high-spec Chrome OS tablet. Still got updates until June 2026. So it's Definitely a good buy if you're looking to buy one. The sound quality is great as well. I'm not going to put any music on because you end up getting copyright issues. So I'm not doing that. But yes, the sound is fine. The only thing I would say, it's a tad tinny. It's not, you know, there is a there is bass to it. But it would have been nice to have a little bit more bass. But it, it's still great sound, don't get me wrong. For watching movies, it's perfect. Usually when I'm watching movies on a laptop or a tablet, I reach for my Bluetooth headphones. I didn't have to do this with this. The sound is absolutely great. There's no problem with it. It could just be slightly bassier when it comes to listening to music. But saying that, you can still listen to music on this and there's no problems at all. You will not be disappointed with this tablet. And when you put it in with the actual keyboard, it's just a great Chromebook as well. So if you are looking for a Chrome OS tablet and you want a high spec one, you can't go wrong with this. This is the M3 version, works absolutely fine. I don't think you will come across issues. I've tried to make it, you know, have issues with the M3 processor and I've not had it. Sure, if you open up hundreds of tabs, then, you know, you're going to get problems. But generally speaking, yeah, this M3 version is absolutely fine. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like below and subscribe to the channel for future videos. And thanks for watching.